Hey everybody, it's good to see you here. Today we're gonna to talk about the gear that you're gonna to need to play fiddle with, and then I'm gonna break down the anatomy of a fiddle. There are a few key items you need in order to be successful starting off with fiddle right away. Some of these you can improvise a little bit at first until you get everything sorted out, but some of these are essentials from the very beginning, so I'm just gonna talk about that real quickly. First, I need a sip of my tea. Okay, so first, you're obviously gonna need a violin slash fiddle. You've probably heard me say violin slash fiddle a lot in these videos already. They are the same thing. Um, there's nothing structurally different about the instrument. They're really not two different things at all. It's just two different terms that you use um, interchangeably. Um, in classical music, you're always pretty much always gonna hear violin um, as the term that's being used. And then in bluegrass and old time, you'll more typically hear fiddle, um, but it's just terminology related to the culture and the region and what kind of music is being played, but they're the same thing. You'll also need a bow, which should be the same size as the violin that you're using. So if you're using a fractional size instrument, you'll need a fractional size bow of the same size to go along with it. So I'll do, uh, do a separate video about finding um, the right size for you if you're not an adult. Um, and, uh, but yeah, just make sure that your bow size matches your fiddle size. This bow that you see me using is a carbon fiber bow. Um, it doesn't matter if it's carbon fiber or wood or whatever material, especially if you're just getting started. Um, carbon fiber is what I use because it's really sturdy and I travel a lot. So I want to make sure that anything that happens, my bow can, um, withstand the pressure. So, um, that's what I use. Um, I will put in the description one or two brands that I've heard about that are good for entry-level violins. Violins are tricky that way. Guitars usually, they there are a wide range of options for guitar players when it comes to entry-level instruments um, that are fairly good quality. But you really, you, there's oftentimes either a really expensive, nice violin that you can get or kind of a not-so-good entry-level pricing violin. Um, but I've heard about a couple that are good. Um, that sort of strike that balance. So I'll put that in the description, but I'm just now starting to hear some different names that can sort of meet that that need that we violinists have for our beginner students. You'll also need what's called a shoulder rest. So what that does is creates a little bit more um, depth um, on your violin. The violin's about this thin, and that's really hard to put your chin down and really hold onto it nicely, and it's also kind of slippery. You've just got um, just that flat back sitting there and it really wants to just kind of slip around. So a typical shoulder rest looks like this um, and you'll see it has a curve in it and the way you want to put it onto your violin is you look at the back of your violin um, and the part if you if you're holding the violin like this and it's facing you you want to think about when you go to put the violin on your shoulder you want the part that curves in to be what's going on your shoulder. So um, that's going to need to be if you're looking at your violin that side, the side that curves downward, curves in um, towards the fiddle, is going to need to be on your right. So if you look at the fiddle, the right hand side, that's the edge that you want to hook the part that curves inward towards the fiddle onto. The shoulder rests have padding on them that um, makes for a more comfortable performance experience. Um, and then these things, we just call them feet, and they're what grip the edges of the fiddle. The fiddle has this binding around the edges, and so the feet just hook over that. Um, so see if I can get it in focus here. Um, you hook it on there and then you hook the other side on here. This is not a full sized uh, shoulder rest though. This was the only thing I could find um, to demonstrate with this. The reason that I don't have a standard full size shoulder rest uh, immediately available to show you is because I use sort of a weird shoulder rest. So this one's set up differently. Um, as you can tell, these arms hook on higher to the fiddle and it's just one continuous curve. There's none of the like curvy wervy stuff that happens, although the, the more significant curve is on the side that you put your um, your shoulder. Um, but this, it hooks onto the bottom, and then the arms hook onto the sides right here. So it's just a little different. Um, the reason I talk about this is because this has, um, I've had a lot more luck with this as far as keeping it on. Shoulder wrists like to fall off a lot, because um, the way the standard ones are set up, they just aren't that secure. Um, they will work for you, and I've seen plenty of people use those kind of shoulder rests full time. Um, but the brand is called Comfort. Um, it's called the Violin Shoulder Cradle. Um, so this is what it looks like. And um, yeah, it, they're a little bit hard to find. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but um, I've, I've been able to find them on Amazon before when I was telling students about them. So this is uh, an alternative if you hate the other kind of shoulder rest immediately, or if you just want to start off with something a little different. Um, they are a little bit more on the expensive side. You can probably find um, your standard shoulder rest for much cheaper. Um, but that's just gonna, I, I really recommend that for anybody and everybody um, because 
it, not many people play a violin without a shoulder rest. Um, if they're doing just a lot of playing, um, especially in like the folk genres and things like that. So if you have a small child that's learning um, and they've got a tiny instrument and it's hard to find a shoulder rest that's going to fit the instrument or you know you're about to move up to the next size so it's not worth investing, you can really take like um, like a piece of thick cloth and fold it up and like put a rubber band around the fiddle on it and that will achieve the same thickness. You just want something there that's just sort of going to gonna cushion um, cushion the fiddle and cushion your shoulder and add a little bit of, um, of depth here so that it's not this little tiny thing that you're having to, to, let, to um, clamp onto. I've seen different students do different things. When I was little, I had this little just piece of foam that was about that thick um, that I just used a rubber band and hooked it onto my first fiddle, which was a 16th size. Um, so yeah, there, there are options if you're just breaking the fiddle in and you've got one that's brand new and you're just getting started on this. Um, like I said, there are different ways that you can improvise with different products. Another essential that you have to have is a cake of rosin. Um, this is dark rosin, which I prefer. It gives a darker tone, nice rich tone. So that's what I prefer. Um, dark hill rosin, I think is what it's called. Um, this used to have a cloth that it was glued to, but it broke out. So it's literally just a cake of rosin now. But here's the thing that you need to know. You've got to score the top of the rosin cake before you use it for the first time. So take like a car key or something. It's just something strong enough to to break into the, the surface and just score it. Not enough that it's going to like bust into pieces, but you um, if you don't do that, then you've just got this slick, beautiful glass-like surface. It's not going to release any rosin onto the bow. Oh yeah, did I mention this is for the bow. This provides the texture that your bow hairs need to have enough friction to create um, the vibrations on the fiddle strings, which are in turn going to create the sound. So if you don't have this, you're going to get this really weak, like weird sound coming out of the violin that's not even going to sound like a violin. So you have to rosin up pretty significantly for the first time, especially if you have a brand new bow that's never been rosin before. You're probably going to have to apply a lot, um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to put you way ahead if you go ahead and score um, the top of it from the beginning. Finally, this is pretty much something you have to have too, although you can find apps that will do the same thing, a tuner. Um, so I have an app that I've used on my phone before. It's the Peterson Strobe app. Um, it's a little less sensitive um, to tuning, so sometimes it won't pick up um, what you want it to pick up. Um, it can kind of be sensitive to noises around it, but um, it still does the trick. This is a kind of tuner that clips onto the um, scroll of your fiddle, and this uh, can work on a lot of different instruments. It can clip onto um, the head of a mandolin or the head of a guitar, um, uh, the bridge of a bass, or onto the fiddle. You take it and you... Just squeeze it and hook it here, and then you power it on, and um, then that's gonna, um, you can see it as you're holding your fiddle up here, um, and tune it from there. So you're gonna have to have one of these because if you don't have one, you have no point of reference to know whether you're even, um, whether you've even got the fiddle dialed into the correct notes. Um, so yeah, you'll need one of those, and if you can't get your hands on, um, a physical one just use an app it's not that big of a deal but these are nice because they're a little bit they tend to be a little bit more accurate um than the apps do finally you're going to need some sort of soft cloth um because you don't want to leave the rosin that's going to come off of your bow caked up on the top of your fiddle so when you put your fiddle up you just want to dust off the strings and then underneath here um, if, if the rosin cakes up, it's going to get really sticky, obviously, because it's rosin, and then it's going to start eating away at the finish. Um, and so you want to keep your fiddle nice and clean and beautiful um, by just giving it a good dust off each time you finish playing. So just a nice soft cloth that's not going to be abrasive on the surface of the fiddle, and uh, you'll be good to go. It's also a good idea to have a backup pack of strings with you. Um, so I recommend the Dario Helicors. Um, that's a really good brand. I use those for years. I use a, a different level of the Dario strings now, but Helicors are especially good for, for entry level. Um, so have a backup um, pack on hand because fiddle strings, they don't break as often as guitar and mandolin strings do, but they do break sometimes. And so you want to have some on hand. I will have a different video that will show you how to string up your fiddle if one breaks. And that's it when it comes to gear. It's not super complicated. It might sound overwhelming at first. Um, oh, and you also need a case for your violin. So hopefully um, one will come with your fiddle um, that usually usually they um, send the fiddle in a case or you purchase it and a case comes with it. Um, but yeah, just make sure you have somewhere safe to put it and safe to transport it in. Like I said, you can kind of, there's some wiggle room on what kind of shoulder rest to use and then you don't have to have some specific kind of cloth, just something gentle for the fiddle. Um, and the kind of rosin is not a big deal either, but just make sure you do have rosin and then a tuner, a bow, um, and a fiddle. So yeah, once you collect these things, you're all set and ready to get started.